uh, you know, uh, Richard, Ong, and the Tans, we went to a farm. You know, how many weeks ago was that? About two weeks, three weeks, two weeks ago? We've been going to farms, Richard and I, and tomorrow we might go to another farm in Pampanga. And we've been checking out the farm, and when, when we go to a farm, the first thing in our mind is what? Well, the view, and then the fruits. Ano kaya fruits meron doon? Because when you go to a farm, the first thing that you think of is what? Anong benefit nitong farm na to? It can't just be a farm na walang, 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 tulad niya, walang bunga, ito, walang, 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 ano, but we can, we can uh, ask them to connect it. I'll connect it. Oh, hold on. Did it work? Oh, it worked. Praise God. It worked for them. So, if you look at the farm, yeah, they will show the farm. Yun. So, what, do you, can you determine what kind of uh, fruit trees here? You see what? Mango? Nyog? Coconut? What else? Well, there is a calamansi tree here. Jen, tama? What, what other fruit-bearing trees do you have here? That's it. Banana. We were able to get some bananas. But then, if you look at the farm, what do you see? What do you notice? This part is so dense, right? But then this part is a little bit cleared, right? For photos. For photos. So they clear it for photos. But you know, when a person buys a farm, he doesn't keep it like a jungle. He wants to make it look nicer. Now, there's another farm that we visited, and this is in Splendor Hills. So after a week, we went here. Who among you went to Splendor Hills with us? How was it? But you've been to Splendor Hills, some of you. So, amazing, amazing place. But before we went to Splendor Hills, we went to uh, Pastor Alex's farm. And he showed us a tree. And he said, you know, Manny, I want you to know what kind of bush this is. Guess. And then he took, uh, he took a leaf and pinaamoy niya sa akin. So, I was looking at the... I have no idea. I thought it was peppers. I had no idea. And then he said, you know, this is... Actually, curry. curry. So it's a curry tree. And I love curries. So I said, you know what? Maybe I will plant this in our small backyard. So what did he do with this farm? He started planting trees. He started clearing it. Nick has a farm. And he started planting trees. After buying it, he started planting trees. Unfortunately, the goats and the, the cow started eating the trees. So what did he have to do? He had to fence it. Amazing. So that's what you do. You take care of what? Your farm. The next, next picture, please. And then in the farm, you know, Pastor Alex, amazing guy, he welcomed us by giving us welcome drinks. And the welcome drink is buko. It's amazing. We're still drinking some of it. So we brought some home. Amazing, amazing buko. It's so, so sweet. And then I asked Kuya Ed, sa si Kuya Ed? Nasa baba si Kuya Ed eh. Ayo, Kuya Ed. Kuya Ed, sige, magchap ka ng buko. Kaya ko yan. So he, he started learning it, right? It's not easy. If you don't know how to handle it, you won't be able to do it. I don't think I'm a farm guy. I would want to own one, but I don't think I'll be the one going up the buko tree and doing, uh, you know, farming, etc. I tried it kasi. I tried it in my mom's house before. We have guava trees. And the guavas are like this big. And I tell you, three guava trees, like one sack of guava. And then I saw that the guava trees are a little bit uh, unorganized. So I tried to organize it and cut. And you know what happened? The guava tree stopped producing fruits. And I was so disappointed. Sabi ko, siguro wala lang akong uh, green thumb. But you know, I'm going to practice. Now that I have my own house and we have a little backyard... We started planting uh, uh, calamansi. So we have calamansi. And the calamansi tree was growing and it was really, really fruitful. So I would ask Yeshua from time to time and Isabel to, to get, you know, uh, the calamansi fruits, right? And then he would come back with a ano, uh, tabo full. What's tabo in English? A uh, dipper. A dipper. Yeah. A dipper, a dipper full of calamansi. 
But then I saw that the calamansi, you know, it's not, it's when it grows, kasi ang gulo eh, ang, ang ano yan eh, uh, you know, it's bushy. bushy. And it doesn't look nice in the backyard. So I wanted it to look nice. So what did I do? I started trimming it, right? I started trimming it. You know what happened? The calamansi tree, one of them died. Oh, two of them. Well, two of them, yes, two of them died. I'm like, and then there's what, when I saw that there, I experimented muna. I don't want every calamansi to die. So I experimented with two. Two died. The other one, the, it has bugs. In fact, the first two were the ones who are really producing so much fruit. But the last three, I didn't trim. Pero ang dami kasing insecto. So what I did was, I started to apply neem oil. Neem oil. But I didn't cut it. You know what? It is producing so much fruits now that it can produce the same amount as the other two trees that died. You know, if you are not good in planting and in pruning, don't do it. Get somebody who knows what they're doing, right? Because otherwise, what's going to happen? The plant will die. You know, I'll be talking about plants and I will be talking about farms. But before I talk about that, I would want to show you how, you know, joyful <laughs> see the speakers are, Dennis. So, and I miss the speakers, but they're not here. Actually, many of our members are not here because they are, they're already producing fruit and we had to plant them somewhere else so that they can multiply. And so, this is Dennis. He's now in Pangasinan and he's multiplying there. Amazing. You know, a person that bears so much fruit has so much praise to give the Lord. And you can see them in the way they praise. The ones who praise more are the ones who felt God's love more, the most. And Jesus, in fact, said, you know, she loved much because what? She was forgiven much. If you want to be fruitful, it starts with your relationship with Jesus and your relationship with Jesus will show. Can you see how, how joyful Kuya Dennis is? This is him every day. This is not like, this is not like uh, just one day. This is him every day. Do you know that God wants you to be fruitful? It is by God's design. Who among you wants to be fruitful? Who among you can say you are already fruitful? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Who among you wants to be more, even more fruitful? Can you smell your seatmate and check if they smell like fruit or rotten fruit? No. It has been God's design from the beginning. So, God wants us fruitful. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1, He said, what did He say to mankind? Be fruitful and multiply. You know the reason why God wants you to fruit, be fruitful and multiply? It is because we are created in God's image. And God is a God who is what? Fruitful and what? He multiplies His goodness. He multiplies His blessing. Grace upon grace He gives. And that's the reason why God wants us to be fruitful and multiply. God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created them. God blessed them. I want you to take note of the, word, the words, God bless them. Can you all say, God bless them? Can you all say, God bless me? If you are blessed by God, the result is always, you will be fruitful. If you are cursed, what would happen to you? Will you be fruitful? If you are broken, will you be fruitful? And that is the reason why Jesus came so that we may be made whole. And when we are made whole, we become fruitful. Like that poor calamansi tree that I just chopped and I thought I was pruning it. In fact, I destroyed it. It did not bear any more fruits. In fact, it died. Because... I didn't bless it. 
But the other calamansi tree that I, you know, wiped with neem oil, it became even more fruitful. Do you know that God is wanting you to be fruitful because it is His design from the beginning? Genesis chapter 1, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Why do you have to fill the earth and why do you have to subdue it? Because, again, the earth is what? It's wild. God created, when God created Adam and Eve and when He created the, the paradise, the whole earth is not paradise. Many people think that, you know, the Garden of Eden is the whole earth. No, it is just a patch on the earth where man and the woman was placed. And it is a paradise, and God is teaching them, I want you, Adam and Eve, to make the whole world like this paradise. I want you to make all of these things and make it look like paradise. Now, let me show you this part. Again, this is uh, Kuya Alex's place. Super nice, right? So what we saw there was like paradise. But Alex was sharing to me like, you know, Matt, Manny, hindi yan ganyan noong una. It doesn't look like that at all. It was bushy. It has a lot of, uh, you know, trees. That It was very disorganized. What did we need to do? We had to cut it. We had to fix it to make sure it looks like this. May trabaho. There's work involved. And so I was looking at it, now, wow, this, this is a lot of work. Do you know that when Adam and Eve, when they were in the garden, they were living in paradise, but the rest of the world is not like paradise. So what did they need to do? They needed people. And that is why they had to multiply. What? They need to work it. And that is why they need to work. They were blessed to work. That's the reason why they were placed there to make the whole earth look like paradise. Do you know that the Lord has given you an opportunity to make this community, to make Philippines look like heaven on earth? That's what we do. That's this design from the beginning. How can I say that? Well, Jesus said, pray then in this way. Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How will, it, how will it happen? Well, give us this day our daily bread. Why do you need bread? Pastor Alex loves bread. Why do you need bread? So that you can work. The only reason why we eat is so that we won't get, it's not because we, he wants us to get fat and just chill. We eat bread so that we can work. And what is the work of God? To bring heaven on earth. And He has given you authority to do that through the gospel. Through the power to heal in the name of Jesus. To deliver them from the enemies. What is the enemy doing? He's making the earth what? Broken. What did Jesus come to do here? He came to seek that which is lost. He did not come to break men's lives, but to save them. Luke 9.56 And He's asking you and me to be more fruitful. The key to fruitfulness is faithfulness, by the way. We cannot be fruitful unless we are faithful. We have to be faithful in God's original design. We have to be faithful on what Christ tells us to do. Jesus said, I am working because my Father is working. I am, I too am working. Are we working so that we can bear fruit? Fruitfulness brings greater, oh, faithfulness brings greater fruitfulness. So, so the topic for the next month will be about fruitfulness. Do you want to be fruitful in every area of your life? Many believers, they think that fruitfulness is just all about spiritual things. Yes, that's number one. God wants you to be fruitful spiritually. But do you know that fruitfulness extends not only for you and for your spirit? Because if you think that fruitfulness is just about your spirit, then you're selfish. 
Because it's just about you. Do you know that fruitfulness extends to your relationships? God wants your relationships to be fruitful. God wants your business to be fruitful. Why? Because if you think your business is just for yourself, then you're selfish. God wants to use your business so that you can use your business to bless His kingdom. God wants you healed. Amen? If you're sick, He wants you to be healed. Why? Because if you're sick, you can't work. In fact, if you're sick, you file for what? What? If you're working, you file for a sick leave. Why do you file for a sick leave? So that you can rest. So that you can get healed. And once you're healed, you cannot use the sick leave anymore. Why? The doctor, the, your, your boss will tell you, hey, it's time to work. And that is the reason why, one of the reasons why I believe that God is not the one giving you sickness. Because if you're sick, you can't work. In fact, the relatives who take care of you, they can't work. The resources that they can use for the kingdom of God is being poured out on you because you are sick. And that's the reason why God wants you to be made whole. God doesn't want you to be broken. Amen. You know that tree, I broke the tree. It can't bear fruit. A person who is broken cannot bear fruit. We come to God broken, yes. We come to God humble, yes. But the moment we come to God broken, what does God do? Does He break us more? Does He make us whole? The Bible says that those who come to Jesus got healed. All those who came to Jesus and asked for healing got absolutely 100% healed. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to open it in John chapter 15, verse 1 to 3. And I believe this is uh, one of the best chapters in the Bible that talks about you bearing fruit. And what kind of fruit does God want you to have? Jesus said, I am the true vine. When he says, I am the true vine, that means there are what? False vines. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Again, going back to Genesis, God's desire is for what? He, every believer to what? To bear fruit. That's his desire. It's his design. Now, it's often preached, this chapter is often preached. I've heard it preached more than a hundred times. I've been a believer since I was five years old. I've heard so many pastors preach about this and praise God. I've learned from it. But you know, oftentimes when this is preached, it creates fear in many believers. Why does it create fear? Because of this. This word. He takes away. And so every believer, most believers will be focusing on this part. Am I that branch that he will take away? Am I that branch that does not bear fruit? So instead of this chapter being an encouraging passage, it becomes what? It becomes a source of fear for, for every believer. But I want you to know that this is a passage that is written in love. And I will prove it to you why it is written in love. It is not a passage that would judge you. It is a passage that would encourage you to bear more fruit for the kingdom. I will show you later. Jesus said, Abide in me as I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. When this is read, it's different when you read it like, Abide in me as I in you. Because you cannot bear fruit unless you abide in me. In fact, if you do not abide in me, I will throw you away. Oftentimes, that is how it's being portrayed, yes? 
But if you really listen to Jesus, this is what He does. Anak, I want you to abide in me. Come, abide in me. Halika, abide in me. I believe that is how He says it. I will prove you why. But before we do that, I want to focus on four things and four areas where God is leading you. First area is this, or first condition is this. Everybody was born on earth without fruit. In fact, you are born without carrying anything. You cannot work because some people will have to, your parents have to take care of you, yes? Zero fruit. Same thing spiritually. We have zero fruit, no fruit at all. This is our first instance. Now, question. Does God reject everybody who has no fruit? If everybody started with no fruit, then all of us would have been rejected already, yes? So, this means that what? The point of the chapter is not about you being judged because you do not have fruit. The focus of the chapter is you having no fruit, but you have the potential to have much fruit. And so, what is your potential? From no fruit to having just some fruit, having more fruit, and having what? Much fruit. Where are you here? Are you in the first slide, or are you already here, moving, moving towards your full potential in God's kingdom? If you are not a believer in Jesus, it is impossible for you to even think of this. But once you are a believer of Jesus, this is where you can be. And this is where God wants you to be. Yes? You know, I praise God Baldwin is here. You know, starting from no fruit. And then he believed in Jesus. And now he's moving to this direction. That every week Baldwin will call me. Before every week, last year he would call me, Pare, can, we, can you drop by the house? I have so much problems. Can you pray with me? And now he would call me. Every week he would call me, Pare, come into the house. I want to bring you to my friend so that we can pray for healing. Like every week. In fact, yesterday he called me up, Nick, and said, Pare, I have another friend who we need to minister to. Can you come to me on Monday? I can't come on Monday, but let's schedule it. Ibana, because he is moving from fruit to much fruit. God wants you to be very fruitful in every area of your life, as I've said, in your family, in your relationships, in your career, in your business, in ministry, health, and finances. If you're bearing fruit in just one area, that's not much. But he wants you to bear fruit in every area that you are in. In fact, He wants you to bear fruit so much so that everything that you touch will be blessed. Who among you wants your hands to be a hand of blessing? I want my hand to be a hand of blessing. I want to be able to prune my calamansi tree without... I want to learn it. That it will bear much fruit and it will not die in Jesus' name. I'll work on it. How do I work on it? I need to study more. I need to believe what, you know, the other experts about pruning says. And I have to do it. Same thing is true with our life. If you want to be fruitful in your family, read the Bible. If you want to be fruitful in your relationship, read the Bible. If you want to be fruitful in your career, read the Bible. The good thing about this is just one book that we need to read. Who among you are readers? I, I wasn't a reader before. But you know, the beautiful thing about the Word of God is you just need to read one book and God will bless you in each and every area. In finances, I was blessed in Jesus' name by God's grace. But when I've learned about uh, Attorney Banjo's revelation on blessing, simply lang yan, sabi niya. Simply, uh, Manny, simply lang yan eh. Because uh, I was involved before in creating events for financial... Uh, financial uh, blessing. So I would create events. Hannah and I would create events attended by 3,000 people, you know, uh, 2,000 people, and we will charge fee for investment, yes? 
And we have Bible verses. We invited believers to preach that, successful finan- financial speakers. And it was good. I mean, you know, in the flesh, their advice was really good. You will be blessed. Pero when I met Attorney Bajo, he said, you know, Manny, simply lang ako. I know all these speakers that you invite for, for, for this place. And he's not bragging. He's sharing with me his heart and his, his success. He's so giving that he wants me to be blessed more. Sabi niya, simple lang ako. Tingnan mo sila. Do you remember this, attorney? We were speaking outside in your parking lot. Tingnan mo sila. You look at them and look at me. Sino mas bless amin? Sabi niya, kung ano? Yeah, right. Sabi niya, Look, look at them, look at me. Who has more time to spend with you? So it's not just financial blessing. I have what? I have the gift of time, Manny. Because God has blessed me. God takes care of my finances. Now I can take care of His people. And I do His main ministry is deliverance. Who among you would want people to come to you so that they can spit and, uh, and uh, vomit? in front of you. If you do not have compassion, you will not do it. It's the most dirtiest thing that you can do. Who among you would want to minister to somebody you're speaking right here in front of you and all of a sudden they will be walking on the, crawling on the (laughs) ceiling. The next thing. It takes compassion and love and courage, by the way. And he said to me, Manny, very, very simple. You know what I do? If I meet a pastor or a missionary, I give. If a church needs money, I give. That's my secret. And of course, I give my tithes. That's my secret. If somebody needs money, I give, no questions asked. I go, oh, wow. I started applying it. I started applying it. I started applying it. I used to give 15% of my tithes. Now I'm able to give 40% of my tithes. Praise Jesus. My heart is to give 90% of my tithes. The owner of Quaker Oats, that's what he does. 90% of his tithes for the ministry. Isn't God amazing? If you look at how much I'm earning, you will not, a lot of you earn more than I do. I was uh, talking to Jan and Chai. They're in IT. So when, 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 when Jan started in Live, we saw her tights. Because we didn't have, not because we want to see it, but because we didn't, you know, for accountability, we saw it. And we saw it grow every, almost every two months. I was like, my goodness, this, this lady is earning. And then, she shared with me one, one of her conversation how much she's earning. I'm like, what? You're earning so much. You're earning much more than I do. Praise Jesus. Faithfulness brings fruitfulness. Amen. If you want your relationship, all of these to be fruitful, man, be faithful. Amen. What's my proof? Oh, man, prosperity gospel. Yan, eh. Well, I'm not preaching poverty gospel. And I'm not preaching prosperity gospel. But what I'm preaching is God is a good God. And He wants to prosper you if you are faithful. And you will be prospered if you follow God's Word. The Bible is very practical. If it tells you not to gamble, or if it tells you not to be drunk in wine, don't you think you will be prosperous? It will make you stop doing things that takes away from you. The enemy comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. If you have the power to say no to the enemy and resist him, don't, won't you be, be prospered? There are a lot of things that are taking away your prosperity because of sin. If you stop sinning, then what? You're able to, to save more. If you're reading the Bible, you will work harder. It gives you what? The right attitude so that you can be prosperous. Yes? Gives you the right character so that you can be prosperous. So that you will not be wanton in your spending. We are not preaching prosperity gospel, but it is the result of the gospel. It is the gospel of good things, plural. It is not just a gospel of salvation. Salvation is just one step 
so that you can enter the kingdom. And when you enter the kingdom, you don't stay at the door, yes? You don't stay at the gates. What do you do in the kingdom? You run. In the same way, when, when, when we arrive in the, the farm, the Splendor Hills, the moment I open the door, what? Did we just enjoy the farm from where we were? Nasa loob kami ng kotse, and then, oh, ang ganda nito, and then we stay there with my kids. For five hours, we just stayed there in the car. Is that what God wants us to experience in this life? When God gave us salvation, He gave us what? The kingdom. It opened the door to the kingdom. And when we enter the kingdom, what do we do? My kids ran. In fact, we have not parked yet. And I asked Yeshua, Yeshua, you want to you wanna go out? Yes, Daddy, I want to go out. Took his toys and just ran. Enjoyed whatever there is to enjoy. We should be the same in the kingdom. Sometimes we, you know, oftentimes believers, they were given the door to the kingdom. The door was open to them. And they stayed just at the door. He just stayed at the door. And then look around. Look around. They see people in the past. Oh, praise God. I'm not like that anymore. I'm in the kingdom. And then they see people running around outside in the kingdom, running around. I don't want to run around like that. They look like they're Pentecostal. <laughs> they look like prosperity gospel. They're too happy. They're too happy. They're not solemn. I just want to be solemn right here at the door. Right? Man, Jesus is inviting you, run toward me, enjoy the kingdom. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen. That's the reason why he wants us to have the heart of the children. Because the moment children see toy kingdom, <laughs> what do they do? Do they stay at the door? They run. You can't find them. They will try to hide from you, in fact. They will enjoy do you think if they go to a, to a, to a nice place in, in the pool, what, what would they do? They will just stay there? No, they will go jump at the pool. Enjoy. Do you know what? That's exactly that's the reason why God wants us to have a heart of a child. Because He wants us to enjoy His kingdom, His presence. Beloved, I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prosper. So it's not just a spiritual prosperity. It is a blessing in all respects. If you want to argue, argue with John. That's what he wrote. It starts with your soul. It starts with your spirit, then your soul, and then your body, and then your relationship, and everything that you touch should be blessed if you're living in the kingdom. How? Question is how? Let's go back. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Oh, oh no. If you're a believer pala, and if you're not bearing fruit, Jesus will take you. <laughs> is that the way it's preached? How did Jesus define this. If you look at the word take away, the meaning is ero. Erated. That's where we get the word. Ero means to lift up. If you're not bearing fruit, what would Jesus do? Jesus will pick you up from the mire that prevents you from being fruitful and He will lift you up and encourage you. Isn't God amazing? That God doesn't want you to be there in the puddle. God doesn't want you to be there in the pig pen. God wants to lift you up from that mire. God doesn't want you depressed staying there. God wants you what? He doesn't want you depressed. He doesn't want you oppressed. He wants you what? To be made whole. He will lift you up. If you are that person right now and you want to be lifted up, I have a good news for you. That is, G that is what Jesus wants to do. And all you have to do is believe. 
If you're part of the branch, He will not leave you nor forsake you. He will not leave you broken. He will not leave you nor forsake you. When you were not a believer, Christ died for you. Yes? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He showed His love while we were still sinners. Ngayong anak ka niya, ngayong ka niya iiwan? Nung hindi ka anak, kinupkup ka niya eh. Ngayong anak ka natatadya kang kanya pagka meron kang problema? Uh, it's hard. When you were not a kid, uh, when you were not a child of God, He did not reject you. Now that you're a child, He will break you off and cast you out? It doesn't make sense. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, he said, If he did not deny, spare his own son, but delivered for he, us all, how will he not also give you all things? Who can separate you from the love of God? Shall tribulation, shall sword, shall famine separate you? Nothing can separate you from the kingdom of God. That is the context. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will lift you up. Isn't that a good verse? Takes away now. Now you know that the true meaning of takes away. Isn't it more encouraging? That actually it means he will lift you up to raise, to lift, to take up. And everything. So you have no fruit. Every branch that does not bear fruit, what does he do? He lifts. Now, let's look at the other verse. Let's look at this. So if you notice, if you look at the vineyard, uh, I, I was able to visit the vineyard in California when I was really, really young. I can't remember how it looked like. I just know from the picture. But if you look here, do you see any branch lying on the ground? If you go to a vineyard, you will see that all the branches are what? Lifted up. Why? Because on the ground, you can't get much sun. On the ground, there is mud. And when there is mud on the leaves, what happens? It cannot get what? The sunlight. And if it doesn't get the sunlight, there's no photosynthesis. There's no processing of food. It cannot bear fruit. So what would the vine dresser do? He will? If you're not bearing fruit because you're on the ground, he will? Lift you up. That's a picture. So that you can bear fruit. Now, let's look. Every branch that bears fruit. Now you're bearing fruit. What would God do? He will break you. Is that what it means? No. Every branch it me that bears fruit, he prunes. Oh, see, Manny? I told you, he will break you. So that it may not, it will bear more fruit. No. What's the meaning of pruning? You look at the pruning. Oh, pruning. Oh, he's undergoing pruning. He's undergoing pruning. What does pruning mean? To cleanse from filth. Kathairo. You see the word ero again there? The word ero was here. Ero. Diba? You see it here again. Katha ero. Hindi ka kinakatay. It's katha ero. To cleanse from filth. To clear by pruning. To cleanse from sin. Isn't that a good thing and not a negative thing? It's a positive word. Pruning is a positive word. It's not the same as being broken off because the word broken off is actually eklaw. Ek. Kat. That's not it. It is cleaning. If you want to argue, argue with the dictionary of the Bible. God is not only lifting you up, He's cleaning you up. Amen. Amen. So, what ruins our life? What prevents us from being fruitful? Sin. If you confess your sins, He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He, isn't, isn't God amazing? He will cleanse you. The moment you come to God, He will lift you up and cleanse you. It's like a baby. You saw a baby crying because he's full of what? Poop. What would the mother do? Now, what would the father do? 
the father will call the mother. <laughs> and what would the mother do? What would the mother? The mother will lift up the baby and clean it up, yes? You know, I would love to talk about God's uh, character like being a mother. It's not often mentioned. Most of our perspective is God being a father, a disciplinarian. But the Bible talks about God being a caring mother also. I, I want to, maybe in the future, we'll talk about that. Look at this. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Amen. You are bearing prut na nga eh. Then He will destroy you. He will break you. It doesn't make sense. In fact, it is not consistent with the Word. Luke 9.56 do you know the context of this? I've mentioned the context of this. They went to, uh, they, they were about to go to Samaria, and the disciples, the Jesus told the disciples, hey, can you go through Samaria and tell them that I'll go there? And then the disciples came back and said, you know, we don't, the people in Samaria do not want you to enter their village. And so what did the, the uh, James and John, the sons of thunder, said? Do you want us? They're exercising the authority, right? Do you want us to call heaven? Call fire from heaven so that they will be destroyed. Isn't God, you know, that, that's their concept. And then what did Jesus say? You don't know what kind of spirit you have. That is not my spirit. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. God did not come to break you. Ah, God, God did not save you just to break you. Labo yun. And another picture of this is like, you know, you know, the Japanese pottery that was broken and then will be picked up by this artisan and will put, you know, put gold. Have you ever seen that illustration? I love that illustration. But it's not like that. Believers are not like potter na binrake ni God. I save you, I made you, and then I'll break you. And then I'll pick you up and put gold around you. Ang gulo. Di sana di mo na lang ako ginawa. Hindi ganun. God said, we were made whole. The old is gone, the new has come. New. You're not repaired. Amen. You were made new. Amen. Amen. Hindi ka repair ni God. You are made whole. You are made new. He did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Another example. That God is not breaking His you. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed by the washing of water with the... I want to take note of this. You take note. That we are cleansed by the washing of water with the... How are we cleansed? With the... We are not cleansed by our sin. And what breaks us? So you think sin is the thing that cleanses you? Is sin is the one that breaks you. Breaking does not cleanse you. What cleanses you? Word. The Word. Later on, I'll prove it more with another verse. That He might present to Himself the church in all her glory, broken, bruised. No. What, what does it say? No spot at all. Amen. No wrinkle at all. Or any such thing. But she would be what? Holy. Holy. And blameless. So husbands ought to love their wives. And that's the standard for all husbands. That's our standard. God is saying, this is how you need to treat your wife in the same way Christ treats what? Church. The church. Amen. Look at this. He who loves his own wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh. Do you ever break your own flesh? Do you ever decide, okay, I'm going to jump this building so that I may be broken. I can jump so that I may be limp. And then when I'm limp, I know that God is teaching me from my limp. So I'm going to jump. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and have an accident so that when I have an accident, I will be broken. And when I'm broken, God will use it to teach me something. That's, no one ever hated his own flesh. 
You wouldn't do that to your own flesh, yes? But you know what? Jesus will not do that to you either. He who loves his own wife loves himself. What would Jesus do? He will nourish and cherish. What is the difference between nourishing and cherishing? Nourishing is giving you what you need. Like a plant, what does it need? It needs good soil. So you plant it in good soil. You will transfer it to a good soil. It needs what? The sunlight. It needs water. Nourishing is about giving so that you can grow and reach your highest potential. Yes? I nourish Yeshua, Isabel, and Yana, and Lisa so that what? They will reach their highest potential in God's kingdom. By the way, your potential in God's kingdom is 10 out of 10. And my job as a father is to make sure that I can, will help you by nourishing you what would help you reach your highest potential in God's kingdom. Providing education, whatever, training, the word, fellowship, whatever, right? But what is cherish? Nourish is different from cherish. Cherishing is about, not about potential. Nourish is about potential. Cherish is about what you are right now. Cherish is about loving you the way you are right now. I don't love your potential, just your potential. I love you for who you are right now. Amen. And that is how God nourishes and cherishes us. Just as Christ does for the church because we are members of His body. Why will He break His own body? His body was already broken 2,000 years ago. He will not break it again. In fact, His body is unbreakable now. You believe this? He's a, he has a glorified body. And He wants the church to experience a glorified body in Jesus' name. He doesn't have to break us. The world does it very, very well already. He doesn't have to add to the problems of the world. In fact, he adds solution. The church is married to Jesus, yes? And so he's not a wife beater. Many, many believers think that they were being broken by God, then that would mean that God, Jesus, is a wife beater. Would you want to be married to a wife beater? No. Would you want to be married to a wife who's beating you? No. How does God cleanse us? But if your wife and your husband is beating you, God loves them too. They need Jesus. How does God cleanse us? Through the Word. Ephesians, we've said, through the cleansing of the Word. Our chapter, in chapter 15, you are already what? Clean because of the Word. So how does God clean us? Through the Word. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. How good is God's word? It's really good. It's for your cleansing. So if we don't have a habit of reading God's word, then we don't have a habit of taking a bath every day. We stink. So have a habit of reading God's word, listening to God's word, because that is how we are cleansed. That's how you tweak you know, you're, you're, you're programming, your renewing of the mind. When God says you are already clean, katharos. Ero, di ba? Ero, kathairo, prun, katharos, clean, to clean, pure, unsoiled. Clean from guilt, guiltless, innocent, sincere, upright, virtuous, void of evil. Clean of cer ceremonially and morally. Isn't God good? The beautiful thing about God is once He cleans you, this is what He says. But the voice spoke again, do not call something unclean. What? God has made clean. And that is the reason why Jesus says, do not judge. Do not judge your brother or sister. Why? Because if they're your brother and sister in Christ, they are already clean. We have no reason or right to say they are unclean. Amen. Isn't God so good that nobody, even Satan cannot say that we're unclean? He can't. He has taken away what? In Colossians chapter 2, he has taken away what? The certificate that is against us. 
and took it away, nailed it on the cross. Why nailed it on the cross? Because the cross, the blood of Jesus, cleanses us from all sin. We are clean. Cut, this is for you. You are clean. Cut, taros. Nobody can tell you you are unclean. In Jesus' name. Your past does not determine you. Does not define you. Who defines you? Jesus. His word. Sarap. Now, how does the Bible clean us? Well, the Bible says that all scripture is inspired by God. God breathed, in fact. God breathed. You know, do you know that when God breathes life into you, you have life? Nobody can take that away from you. It is inspired by God, profitable for what? Teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequate. Equipped for every good work. So if you will argue with me that God had to use sickness to teach you something, or had to break you to teach you something, or you have to experience trials to teach you something, well, that only means that what? The Bible is not what? That profitable. It is not enough. Yes, Nick. Okay, so Nick said, adequate means complete, lacking nothing. By the way, training is what? Discipline. In other translations, it is discipline. The way God disciplines us is through the Word. Meaning to say, I don't have to go through trials to learn something. I can learn from the Word. If I do not learn from the word, I experience trials. And if I fail, it is not God bringing me brokenness. It is a result of my what? My disobedience. There is consequences in our choices. If we make the right choice, we will reap right consequences. If we reap the if we plant the wrong choices or make the wrong choices, we will reap what? Wrong consequences or, or bad consequences. And so, if we look at this, all scripture is profitable for reproof, correction, training. It means it's enough. Not only enough, it makes us what? Complete. Like what Nick said, adequate means complete. Equipped for every good work. Lacking nothing. If you read the word. If you obey the word. Very clear? So, why would God send you sickness to teach you something? That only means... His word is not enough. He had to get another uh, strategy to teach you something. When Jesus, do you believe that Jesus is the exact representation of God the Father? Amen. If you say that God had to use sickness to teach you something, then that means that Jesus would have applied that strategy if it is effective, yes? Do you ever read in the scriptures, in the, in, the, in, the epistle, uh, in, the, in the gospels, where Jesus sent sickness to something, to teach them something? If a person came to him, a blind person came to him and said, Lord, please heal me, I'm blind, I want to see. Did you ever read in the scriptures that says, Jesus, Jesus saying to that man, no, I'm not going to heal you right now. I will heal you tomorrow. Because God is teaching you something from your sickness. All who came to him was healed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. He did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And that is the gospel. He uses his word to teach us something. In fact, Hebrews chapter 4.12. For the word of God is living and it is active, sharper than two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of the soul and the spirit, both in joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. What does God's word do? It filters what is good. It filters what is bad. If it is bad, God will talk to you in your spirit. Say, Manny, do not do that. If you do that, what would happen? You will get hurt. It's like uh, when you were young, do you ever remember your mom and dad telling you not to touch the stove? Have you ever remember that? Do not touch the stove. Why? Why? Because you will get burned. Yes? 
So your mom would tell you, anak, does your mom speak to you in Tagalog or English? If she's mad, Tagalog. <laughs> if, yeah, so, in English, right? So, or Tagalog. So, do not touch. Wag mong hawakan yan, mapapaso ka, anak. Wag mong hawakan, anak. Wag, wag mong hawakan. Does your mom have to get your hand and put it on the hot plate? Oh, ayan, anak, ha, mainit, ha? Oh, what did you learn from it? Oh, okay, wag mo na hawakan ulit. Is that how your mom teaches you? No. He would tell, she would tell you, do not touch, anak. And then when you touch, aray! What do you, how do you say? What's your first language when you get hurt? Is, is it aray or, you say aray? That's, that's cute. That's funny. Huh? Awi, awi. How would you know if you are uh, a Filipino? A Filipino would say aray, right? Aray, aray. Awi, ouch. When you say aray, what would your mommy tell you? Kita mo? You know, in our generation, kita mo? Ano yung yara sa'yo? Kau kasi, nasaktan ka tuloy, napasok ka, pak! That, that's, how, that's how parents who are, you know, that's how they are. I mean, that's, that's a wrong parenting, okay? But you know what? A loving mom would say, would address the wounds right away. Ano, hindi ka pa natuto, akin ay isang mong kamay. Pak! It will filter. God's word is a warning. Warn, 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 warn. If you get hurt, what does God do? Okay, anak. All you have to do is repent. Don't do it again. And come back. Come back. And that's why we had to transform our mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed in your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, which is good, acceptable, and perfect. God's word is a seed. It is planted in our spirit. I will talk more about this next week. Our job is to allow it to grow in our mind and allow it to show in our body. Now, let's continue. Abide. It gets better. So he wants you to bear fruit. All you have to do is read the word and believe and abide. Yesterday, we were, uh, Lisa and the, the women, they have live women and they talked about, they, they asked me to, to share. I didn't share. I preached. So, and one of, the, one of the ladies there asked me, Pastor Manny, what do you mean by abide? I, I've heard it preached. I've been a believer for so long. But what is the practical? How do you show it in a practical way? Abide. So let's read it first. Can we all read it? Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Again, this is an encouraging verse. It is not a verse that should be taken negatively. If you don't believe it, then it's negative for you. If you believe it, then it's positive for you. That's, that's just how it is. Abide. What do you mean by abide? Meno. The original word is meno. What does meno mean? To stay. So when God changed the, changed the word abide, stay in me. Isn't that amazing? Another meaning of meno is to continue. Continue in me. Another name is uh, dwell. Dwell in me. Remain. Rest in me. Persevere in me. Be steadfast in me. Stand on my word. Be in close, settled union. In dwell, wait for. Another beautiful word about meno, abide, is wait. Wait for me. Wait, Lord, mainit eh. May, ayoko na dito. Ayoko na ng relationship ko. Wait for me. Abide. Abide in me. Huwag mong isipin niyang iba. Sa akin ka tumingin. Abide in me. You know, uh, uh, abiding makes you fruitful. You are being fully supplied when you abide in Jesus. You are being fully sustained. You are being fully supported. And therefore, when you abide in Jesus, you are fully what? Satisfied. If you're not abiding, the reason why we're not satisfied with our life is because well, sometimes we will abide. On Sundays, we will abide. 
On Wednesdays, if there's live women, we will abide. But the rest, we don't abide. If you want to be sustained, so supported, and supplied, and satisfied, abide. Abiding is being faithful, holding on to God's promises. Faithful. Faithful. Hold on to His promises by faith. Now, I want to show you uh, a picture. This is not my car, but it's a picture of what I did when I tried to leave in Lumayas. When I was in college, I disappointed my mom so much, so much, that I decided, okay, I'm going to leave the house already. I don't want to abide with you. Meron naman akong ipon. I have, I have money in the bank. I have my car. Well, it's their car, but I can use it. <laughs> and then, so I packed everything, including the <laughs> salbabida. No. So, so I packed everything while I was in the house. And my dad is a disciplinarian. My mom is a disciplinarian. And so I forgot something inside the house. So I went back to get it from my room. And when I opened the door, my dad, which is about six feet, feet tall, huge, was standing on the door. And I was like, uh-oh. Here we go. I was bracing myself. I was bracing myself for him to what? Break me. But as I was bracing, you know what he did? He embraced me. And this is what he said. My dad is a disciplinarian. I, I, I got, you know, whacked when I was a kid. Flog, like you know, like whenever whenever people would say, "Oh, pag only child, you're spoiled." No way, they don't. You, they don't know my parents. But then at that moment when I about to leave, my dad opened his arms, and it's wide. It's like his arms is as wide as he is tall, and he embraced me. And you know what he said? Anak ulitin mo pato, ah. This is what he said. Anak, stay. That was it. That was it. Anak, stay. Do you know that that is what God tells you? Whenever you sin and you want to walk and leave, God is telling you, no, anak, stay. I don't want you to leave. Stay, anak, stay. But then you have a choice. You have a choice if you're going to abide. He will not... He, because if you are pushing against him and he will try to constrain you, you will get hurt. So if you try to leave while he is holding on to you, he will let you go. It's not his will to let you go. But he will give you the word, stay. So maybe this is the word that God wants you to hear right now. Stay. Stay. Abide. Isn't it a beautiful word? Why wouldn't want you to stay? Why wouldn't you want to stay in God's loving arms? You know, Luke chapter 15 showed us the prodigal son. What happened when he didn't stay? And what happened when he decided to go back and stay? Why would you want to go through this big pen experience? God does not want you to go through that. That is why He's telling you to stay. The same thing in the church. Stay. 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 If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch. Oh, yana, yana. Sabi ko you, eh. He is thrown away in the branch, eh. And dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. Burn. You will get burned if you don't Stay. No, that's not God. what God wants. Every branch that is in Jesus has life. Yes? It's not dead. The only branch that dies up are the branches that are not really Jesus. Do you know that in a church, not everybody is actually a branch? Not everybody is actually connected to the vine. But if you are really connected to the vine, you will abide. Why? Because you have a true understanding of who God is, you will abide. Why would you leave a loving father if you know him? If you don't know him, you will leave. True believers abide. And true believers bear fruit. 
And so this is what Jesus is saying. You know, remain in me. Another version, NIV. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and wither. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. Why would you want that? Therefore, remain. It's as simple as that. Huwag kang aalis. Pag umalis ka, magugutom ka eh. Ayaw kitang magutom, anak. Yes. I want you to stay. Abiding is a choice. Remaining is a choice. It's not automatic. God is wanting you to stay. If you want to go, it is your choice. Do you want to be like this? Like a vine that is, uh, and, and your leaves are not, you know, thriving, not bearing fruit. Now, how do you know if a person is abiding? You will know them by their fruits. Uh, Pastor Alex, this is the last word that he mentioned, one of the last words that he mentioned uh, when, we were, when we went from Splendor Hill. So the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, you stay. Our members left already, and then I stayed a little bit. I wanted to go home, but I stayed. I said, you know what? I'm observing. Uh, si Ate Lisa and si Kuya Alex, they don't have helpers there. So papano to? We have so many trash. Who's going to help them? I, I doubt if the basurero goes there in Splendor Hills. I doubt it. So I said, okay, I'm going to stay. And when I stayed, I went down and asked Kuya Alex, Kuya Alex, I'm going to help you with the basura. No, 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 no. He said, your anointing is not to throw away the basura. Your anointing is to preach the gospel and to heal the sick and cast out demons. I said, no. Yes, I know that. But Yan and Chai were there. And they told me, Yan, uwi na kayo. And then Yan and Chai told me, before I spoke to him, they told me, and then Pastor Manny, una na kayo kasi we're gonna throw away the basura. I'm like, I'm not gonna let you throw away the basura. I will throw away the basura. I'm not gonna let you carry it. So I called me, Kuya Alan, uh, Kuya Ed, and Kuya Matt. I said, Kuya Matt, tara, tulungan natin, Yeshua. Let's, let's pick up some stuff and throw away the basura. And so we, 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 we gathered it and we burned it. And then Kuya Alex said, you will know them by their fruits. I said, buti na lang, I stayed. <laughs> buti na lang. Good thing I listened to the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure he's not going to think this way. But I'm pretty sure, gano ba naman to live, live, live. You left the basura. <laughs> No, good thing I stayed. Praise God. And good thing uh, Kuya Matt and Kuya Ed was there. You will know them by their fruits. Amen. The Bible says grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs or from thistles, are they? Those are the branches that will be burned. The thorn bushes and the thistles. But you are not a thorn bush. You are not a thistle. You are a branch of the vine. Every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. Simple, super simple. A kid would understand this. A good tree cannot produce a bad fruit, nor a, can a bad tree produce a good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Because you're not what? A good tree. You're not part of the vine. You will know them by their fruits. And so as we were going home, uh, I was at the back of Kuyamat. Si Kuya Matt, dala niya yung van ko. Nakita ko, medyo pinipinahan niya yung kanto. Sabi ko, alanganin to. I, I was wanting to honk him, but I don't want to force him because baka naman ma, ma, mataranta lalo. And I saw the van that I care so much. No, no, just, no, no guilt, no guilt. Pagliko niya ganyan, nagasgas. As in, tumama sa, sa gutter that this tall. And it was creep, like Narinig ko eh. Naramdaman ko. Hindi ko lang narinig, naramdaman ko. And then, baba. Baba si Kuya Ed. Tiningnan. Oh, buti na lang si Kuya Ed. Tiningnan. Oh, so good. Kuya Ed will look at it. I don't want to go down. Look at it. Bumaba si Kuya Ed. Tiningnan niya. Wala, wala. Blag. Oh. Narinig ko yung pinta. Blag, wala. 
Sabi ko, in my, in my heart, I'm like, well, actually, wala. wala nasaktan ako. <laughs> pero, pero hindi ako nagalit. Wala, wala. Sin. And then when I went home, I didn't even mention it to the kids. I just said, oh, he's got scraped. Oh, you see, he, he, he's quite close. I was more afraid doon sa mga driver ng tricycle kasi dikit eh. So he's not, if you drive my van, it's usually, it's bigger by one foot than the, the normal car. So, and then when I went home, we're about to pray already and sleep. I heard Isabel and Yeshua talking to their mom. I, I, I left the room ne. And so they said, oh, daddy didn't get mad. Daddy didn't get mad. They were so surprised. They were so surprised. So I went back to the room. I wanted to know what they're talking about. They were so surprised. I said, Daddy, I was so surprised that you didn't get mad at Kuya Matt. Yeah, I praise God, praise God, I said. Because you already messaged me about it. Yeah, I thought. I thought, Nick! Did we renew it Kuya Matt? No, we didn't do that, Kuya Matt. We're just joking, we're just joking. I, I, told, I told Nick, Nick, palta mo yung kotse ko yung bago, ha? <laughs> and then I, so, so I went back to the room, and then my, my son said, you know, I'm so proud of you, Daddy, you, you didn't get mad, but how come when I dink the ref, you got <laughs> mad at me? And then Yana said, oh nga, how come when I did this, you got mad at me? I said, you know what, that was the past. That the Lord is changing me. But I'm sorry. Please erase that from your mind. <laughs> you know what? We have to be consistent with our fruits. Uh, we have to bear fruit in our family. We are to bear fruit in our marriage, not only in the ministry. We have to bear fruit. You will know them by their fruits. I'll skip this. You know what this is? Uh, it's a fig. It's actually a fig. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna not, not discuss that anymore. It's cute naman. I want to end with this verse. Oh no, no, not that. I want to end with this verse. Yeah, it's amazing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, what happens? It is an invitation. Ask whatever you need. No, desire. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Isn't God amazing? That when we're in abiding, when we're living in, you know, when we're staying in the Lord, ask whatever you wish. It will be done for you. You know the reason why? It's because you will not wish anything that is bad for you. If you really know the heart of God, you will not wish things that is selfish. The Bible says in James that you do not, uh, you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask for what? To satisfy your pleasure with the wrong motives. But if you're really abiding in God, you know what you'll ask most? You will ask more for other people. I notice a believers who really abide in the Lord, they ask for other people. So when we were, when we were blessed, uh, we've been praying for a vehicle in Live. Uh, and, you know, they, they use my vehicle. Hannah knows that. They use my van if they need to be. Uh, and so we were wanting to buy a vehicle for Live HQ. But you know what? We saw Live Iloilo, and they needed the van too. Well, arguable. <laughs> arguable. But we love them more. Okay. That's true. So, the first van we gave to Iloilo. Do we need it? Yes. But they need it too. You know, when you are a believer, you will ask more for the other person. When you abide in Jesus. Because you will not look at yourself. You're satisfied in God. Lord, hayakap, yakap mo ko. Paano iba? na hindi pa nila ka, ikaw kilala. They need you too. They want, I want them to experience how much you love me. Therefore, I, you know, Lord Jesus, use me to share the gospel to them. Use me to bless them in Jesus' name. That's how we start praying for people. 
abide, you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will not lack nothing. You will lack no good thing. It will be done for you. My Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit to prove to be my disciples. Last word. When you bear much fruit, is the fruit for you? Or for other people? The reason why God wants you to bear much fruit is so that other people will eat of that fruit and they will be blessed and they will glorify God. That's the reason why He wants you to bear much fruit. Just as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Isn't that a... It's not negative at all. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you so that your joy, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Question. How's your joy in the Lord right now? Is it full? Or is it not full? God is saying, my joy will be in you because you have understand my love, which I have loved the Father, and He has loved me. I will let you experience that kind of love so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be made full. God wants to make you well, make you full. All you have to do is abide. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that you have loved us with an everlasting love. And you want this love to be experienced by other people too. And you want to use us so that they can be blessed through us. You have blessed us so much that we can be a blessing to others. Father, I pray that each one, each person represented here may bear much fruit in your name for your glory. Whatever they're going through right now, I pray, as you have, your words have said, stay, stay, stay. In Jesus' name, stay in the love of God. Father, also, I pray for each and every one here that you will just let, let them feel your embrace. Lord, yakapin nyo naman sila. Yakapin nyo naman kami. Father, I pray they will experience your embrace and your assurance that you will never leave them nor forsake them. All they have to do is abide, remain, and stay. I declare blessings upon you. Blessings upon blessing. The blessing of peace. The peace that transcends all understanding. Love. Joy. Faith. Hope. I declare hope. I declare that you will find your hope in Jesus right now. Whatever you're going through in Jesus' name, I declare prosperity in every area of your life by your abiding in the Word and by you believing in Jesus. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you.